How important is player safety in the conference for you guys? Oh, it's huge. I mean, look, these are uh, the culture, it's about education, welfare of students. I mean, I've been really impressed as I've gotten a lot of coaches. They see their role not only as uh, the X's and O's and how we're doing the game, but teachers and yeah. developing the young men. So uh, whenever we've talked about uh, proposed rules and research, more often than not, our coaches say, well, we do that already. Of course we do that. So I, I actually think our coaches are very far advanced compared to the national standard and the state of the art and how you teach the game the right way, teach the game safely, uh, be smart in sure. terms of the amount of contact, yet still develop a winning culture and the team's capable of winning. You know, it seems like you guys have all, uh, and this is not just football, and I think sometimes we get fixated just on football, but you know, with the athletic prowess of your conference, it seems like you guys have really kind of led the way um, in putting player issues, that, you know, in the forefront of things. And I know that we all talk about revenue and we'll talk about TV and all that stuff, but you really have worked hard to put player safety and player needs ahead of a lot of other things, haven't you? We have, um, not just in the um, rules making, but I think it's, we feel it's the culture of our schools and our, and our conference. And these are values that are important to be seen as a, as a leader in doing the right thing by students and student athletes. So it doesn't just show up in rules. We actually put our money where our mouth was, and we um, a few years ago we started league wide investing three and a half million dollars a year in a collaborative research program amongst our twelve schools. I think we came to the view that um, uh, if you combine the expertise on our campuses uh, between our researchers our doctors, our trainers, then you look at some of the medical schools that we've got in this conference, oh, I mean, yeah. some of the best in the world. And if we could somehow unlock that with a collaborative program and, and share ideas um, and figure out where the centers of excellence are, we can make a real contribution. So we're funding all kinds of research and student athlete health initiatives in a bunch of uh, different different areas, including head trauma. Yeah. Head trauma, we've got a head trauma task force that's um, a point of emphasis. Uh, we're one of the first conferences to have our own database, kind of tracking incidences of head trauma. And I'm, I'm, we held a conference at UCLA last year with the NCA and the Department of Defense. So we're really, we have stepped out and it's the beginning, but I think we can make an important contribution to the national uh, efforts to do a better job looking after the welfare of student athletes. It, it, Commissioner Larry Scott joins us on 1580 The Fanatic, brought to you by Harmon Solar. And the one thing that you said there that really that, stands that, out to me is you guys stepped out. And you have taken that step forward. And it's not something that every conference is doing. A lot of people are scared to talk about concussions. A lot of people are scared to talk about player safety and health initiatives. When, when, What was the tipping point for you as a, as a leader, as an executive in sports? When did that change? Well, as a leader in sports, I've, I've been involved in sports for a long time. Um, in tennis, pro tennis, men and women's before and I, I've certainly always you played tennis. Didn't you? I was a pro player for You're a years. Yep, tennis player. yep. Way back when, and uh, <laughs> I've always and, and when I came up as a tennis player. So my, my view on this dates back to when I was uh, in my early twenties and I was playing the pro tour. I got to know Arthur Ashe. Oh, sure. Around. He was still alive. He was a leader in tennis, and he was you know before Magic Johnson. These guys, he was he was one of these athletes that stood for more than just the success in the court, he wanted to make a difference in the world. Um, sure. He was a real humanitarian. Yeah. And that influenced me and it spoke to me. And so in the roles I've been in, I've always tried to see how sport can be used as a platform for positive change in the world. Athletes have an incredible opportunity as role models, spokespeople, you get attention. The question is, what are you going to do with that? Yeah. And, uh, with that comes opportunity and I think responsibility. And so I've tried to bring that to this role. And um, certainly the leaders of our universities are on the cutting edge of research. And they are changing the world every day. So you've succeeded in you think? Well, I, I guess I found a nice marriage with my own personal views very much to the people views of our schools who are educating the next generation, trying to make the world a better place. And we found a way to apply that ethos to our conference yeah. and sports. So yeah, we're, we're trying to win. We're trying to be competitive. But if we've got a role to play in terms of being a leader and advancing um, uh, innovation in student athlete welfare and health and 
research into concussions, we should do it. Yeah, no doubt about it. Commissioner Larry Scott's on the Monty Show, and you talked today about shortening games and timeouts and half times, and why is that a, a, an important thing for you guys to do? Well, you know, college football is very healthy, but I think, you know, when something's very healthy, it's a good time to look around the curve and, and, and try and experiment. I fundamentally believe we would be better off if the average length of our game went from almost three hours and 30 minutes, which it is now closer to three hours. Um, I think, um, and, and the pace of the way the game progresses, but, uh, you know, you want to do that without fundamentally changing the game. Um, sure, yeah. And I, I think that's better just because, you know, there's more competition for people's time, uh, less attention span, and uh, people want to see more action in less time. It's just kind of the way the world is, is going. So, um, you know, we can do that through looking at some rule changes nationally. Yep. In fact, Ray Anderson, the Arizona yep. State yep. Athletics Director, is the National Chair of the Competition Committee for College Football. Wow. And so I talked to Ray about that. He's, gonna, he's leading the national effort to look at all the rules in college football to see how we feel about the presentation of the game, where it should go. And uh, so we're well represented there with Ray. He played a similar role, by the way, when he was at the NFL. Yes, he did. Yeah. So, so we're well well taken care of there. But within our own conference, you know, we can do some things uh, to uh, reduce the number of television breaks and timeouts by coming up with some creative concepts to on-screen branding that replace sure. the breaks. And we're looking at halftime. We're going to pilot reducing halftime from 20 minutes to 15 minutes during the off-season, during the non-conference season this year and, and see how that goes, see what we learn. Yeah, because, you, you know, it's that, it's that fine line where you have less commercials, but you got to find a way to build to keep that revenue stream yes. there. When you, you talked about Sling today, you talked about CenturyLink today, everybody wants to know, are you, when are you going to be on DirecTV? Is DirecTV coming? Is DirecTV the, the most important part for you? Because I'm going to sit here and tell you, I think it's finding a full-time streaming platform. What Amazon and the NFL are doing, I think those things are hugely important. So A, where are you with DirecTV? And B, where are you guys on mobile platforms? So, um, there's no update in terms of where we are. Um, um, in news for you today. I'd say short term, they are the biggest distributor we don't have. So it's important. Yeah. Long term, the world's changing very rapidly. The biggest technology companies in the world, Amazon, Facebook, Apple, YouTube, which is part of Google, Netflix, these are the companies, uh, I should add Twitter, which is something we experiment with. These are the companies that combined have bigger reach than even satellite companies, cable companies. Um, and I think when we're next out in the market negotiator TV rights, I think those are the names we're going to be talking about, in addition to the ESPNs and Foxes so it's getting this and the TVs yeah. and, and, and Comcast and Time Warners, but the Coxes. But the, um, the world is changing. There's going to be a lot more choice. Technology is going to allow fans to get in different ways. We own and control our content. We purposefully did not hitch our wagon to ESPN and Fox for 25 or 30 years. And it makes it more challenging short term. We don't have the leverage. We don't have the 800 pound gorilla to go in the negotiation. Long term, and long term isn't that far off. I think we'll look back and say we are better for it. Well, and that's kind of what it feels like because you guys really have, you could have easily caved in, and I don't, obviously, we don't know the inner workings of your discussions that you've had with DirecTV. You could have easily caved in, but you haven't. How difficult has it been for you guys to hold out and not make a deal with DirecTV that could have you know, been detrimental or whatever? How difficult has it been for you guys? Well, it's hard because there's uh, a lot of short-term pressure um, from fans, from alumni, uh, from, from our programs. Um, and that's important. By the same token, I've got a very clear view of the importance of our um, control and our independence and where the future is going and uh, maintaining the value sure. of, of what we have. And so I've got a very long-term uh, strategy and view that I think the game is coming to us yeah. a little bit. And uh, I've been aligned with our university leadership that sees it that way. And don't forget, we created a network on the heels of a massive ESPN Fox TV. Yeah. So, and by where you guys are located? 
you know, having lived in San Francisco and worked at, at KMBR and knowing that climate, I mean, I think that's a real advantage for you guys, being, because you're not just a West Coast school or, or conference anymore, that little conference that it was. I think you guys are a global brand now, and a lot of it is who's in your backyard. Am I wrong about that? No, you're right. Well, first of all, our schools are global brands, and that's why we're taking basketball teams and football teams to Australia and China and all that. Our schools are some of the leading global higher education brands out there with alumni and students from all over the world, faculty from all over the world. Um, we are at the forefront of looking at our uh, conference and athletic programs uh, globally. But as you mentioned, you know, being, you know, we're one of the one of the few sports media companies based in San Francisco, the heart of Silicon Valley. Our alumni are the leaders at all these tech companies. And so geographically, um, kind of our mindset and in terms of our alumni connection, we are very well placed to be first movers as this world evolves. Um, last question I have for you is about expansion in the future of college football. You have a brand like BYU just sitting there. A, would you tell me, were there ever serious conversations to bring BYU to the conference? And B, do you see yourselves growing into a super conference or adding teams down the line? Yeah, so in terms of looking back, the process we went through, we look very broadly. Right? All kinds of different schools before we decided on Colorado and Utah. Going forward, we're, we're not looking at expansion in the time soon. But I also never say never because we have the history of college realignment. You know, there have been waves of it. Um, so I certainly think we're going to come up in for it. Yeah, and, and so that's a. So you don't want to answer the question <laughs> you, I, I, I would, I would I never confirm an individual oh, school being considered. Right. Exactly. Great. Thank you. I appreciate you sitting down. I know these are two great days. I think you guys do a great job with this. This has got to be the easiest event we do all year. Thanks for coming on the show. Really good to talk to you. Glad you're here. Thank you. You bet. Commissioner Larry Scott of the Pac-12.